is Jessica from Peace Love Books and Shame here with a very exciting video. I am reading historical romances. So if you followed me for a while, you know I used to be obsessed with historical romances. 2020, it was like my entire personality. I love them. I couldn't get enough of them. It was like half of my reading. And then it slowed down since then, especially 2023. I read maybe like two a month. I really didn't read a lot of historicals. I wasn't like super intrigued by them. I feel like publishing really slowed down with historicals and I just didn't make time for them. But I have asked a lot of friends on booktube to try to read them again and do a vlog for you guys. So we are all posting on the same day. I think I have asked 10 different people <laughs> to join. So there are quite a lot of us. Your subscription box should be full of historical romance content, which is super exciting. I know Bridgerton is coming out this year and I just really want to fall in love with the genre again. I feel like publishing really slowed down and isn't valuing it anymore. I do think that it became very contemporary in the traditional publishing world for historical romances which is not what i gravitate towards so we're gonna see what i end up reading for this vlog i am for sure right now going to be reading to find out the heart by joanna Lindsay. this is my book club pick for historical hellions that i wrote with samantha and now christy from christy reads lot and i'm very excited for this one i don't know what the premise is of this he had kidnapped her oh someone kidnapped her and wants to marry her and i think then she decides to take it upon herself and choose her own husband so i don't know who he is he's a knight oh maybe a he is the one who kidnaps her. He's the knight who kidnaps her to deliver her to this lord. And she's like, no, I'm not going to marry this lord. Why don't I marry you instead? So Joanna Lindsay has really fun books and I always end up loving them. So I'm very excited for this one. I'm also actually halfway through Harper St. George. So I asked my Patreon, I give them four audiobooks that are historical. And I was like, which one should I read? I was hoping the Kate Bateman would win. It came in second. Harper St. George won. And I really love this series though. I think this is book three or four the duchess takes a husband i think is what it's called and it's fine so far i've given all the books in the series four or five stars i really enjoyed it but this one's a little boring she is a widow and she wants to experience sex and have pleasure because she has that ability now so she asks the hero who is a bastard child he i mean like a son he's not a child anymore but he definitely has a reputation and he is like i don't want to do that he's like you are too like proper you're too nice i guess like he she's not the kind of person he would just have an affair with and so he basically says no and shuts her down and she's like fine i'll go find someone else he's like well we can get you like toys and she's like no i want a man and so he ends up getting in this dilemma where he needs people to give him money for this business venture he needs investors and they don't take him seriously so he's like well i'm engaged so i am settling down and he asks her to fake engage him so it's their romance so far and we're already halfway through and i feel like they just like sit around and talk i need things to happen and i feel like a lot of recent historical romances are so much sitting around and talking and that's the entire plot and i get so bored with that so i'm really sad that this one is doing that because the series as a whole usually doesn't do that it's definitely has a lot more going on normally and so i'm really sad that i'm not loving it but we'll see how i feel i have a lot of knitting and crocheting to do i'm actually doing a crochet blanket i crochet a row for every book i read so i am going to read an ebook first tonight and finish that and then get started on this so i will have a row of that to do and then i've been walking my dogs and i'm gonna read a lot this week Weekend. so we'll see how much i get done but i'm very excited i want to try to read four books for this vlog this one harper st george another audio and then another physical book so we'll see what i end up picking up i do have five books set out that i want to read but i talked about those in my january reset vlog we'll see which one i end up picking up but hopefully this one's good i have very high hopes i just want to love historicals again It is currently Saturday. I got about 100 pages into this yesterday and now I have 140 pages left. I did end up finding the ebook on Libby. 
Libby because I can send that directly to my Kindle. So I read that during my workout this morning. So I got 50 pages read this morning alone just while I was working out. <laughs> I do have Lily here. She's so cute. But I've read a lot today. So I'm on page 270 and I was on page 110 this morning and it's almost 1130. So I'm definitely going to finish this. I have to finish this today for my book club, but it's very interesting. So uh, first off, the main plot is that like he kidnaps her to go marry someone and she's supposed to be betrothed to one of these two guys that her dad was wanting her to, but then her dad died and then neither of them is like responding to her. So this other guy is like, I want her. She's got a lot of land and money. And so the hero's a knight and he always like fulfills every kind of job he's done. So he has literally like kidnapped her, <laughs> rolled her up in a blanket and stole her with his men. And then she's talking to his men and they're like, you should just marry him so they end up getting married and returning back to her place and it's so interesting because most of the plot revolves around the romance like there's really no external plot going on like nobody's coming after them they're just living at her keep and they sleep together and she's like wow that actually like wasn't good and he is this like big hulking giant man and she's this tiny petite delicate thing and he's worried about hurting her but she's like literally like the sex was not good and so he seeks advice from a not a prostitute but she just like sleeps around a lot with the guys in the keep and he asks her how to pleasure her without hurting her and so like the main plot now is like him trying to have sex with her so she can enjoy it which is so interesting because like typically this was written in 1989 like a lot of the older historicals the heroes do not care whatsoever about the heroine when it comes to having sex with them and like like pleasuring them and so she it's like a big deal she was like this was not good like you literally lasted five seconds and i'm here like hmm. and so that's very interesting but it's it's like a funny dynamic but i also am like but i would love a little bit more to the plot but i am enjoying it and also so interesting is that her main servant is gay and she had sent him to when the guy first arrived before kidnapping her the hero she had sent him to like help him bathe and undress and he like made a move on him and he's like oh my god what are you doing like get out and it's like a joke between her and her servant now and she like really likes him they grew up together his twin sister was her servant before him but then she passed away and so they're really close and then she also has another servant in the kitchens that she helped take in when his i think his parents had died and he has a limp and she is very protective over him she's like i know so many people see him as like contagious or like they need to prove that they're better than him so like they treat him horribly just because of his disability and she's like you will not do that and she is like very clear that he is given a fair shot at anything he wants to do so i think it's so interesting that how progressive so many of her characters are and like the heroine specifically with these characters and she's like waiting to see how the hero will react because she knows how society reacts but she's very protective over these people so so interesting and i am really enjoying it i would have loved a little bit more action and adventure in here but so far we'll see how it goes but i'm also almost done i have three hours left the audiobook of the harper st george i'm still very bored so it's again like they're getting to know each other they like each other they physically like each other they're still fake engaged but it's just a lot of sitting around and talking so this one i'm probably going to end up giving three stars this one we'll see maybe a four but i'm gonna go read and I will talk to you guys later. Hello, I'm here because I finished two books for this vlog. I did finish To Find Out the Heart and I finished my Harper St. George. I actually just finished it. So To Find Out the Heart, I think I'm gonna give three stars. I did talk in the live show and it's not the worst book we've read and I was tempted to give it four, but I think it's more three and a half and I'm still rounding down to three because nothing was happening in this plot. The romance was very progressive in the fact that the heroine is very headstrong and she really pushes back against the hero. She basically was the one who decided they were going to get married. Like she wasn't forced into marriage. Circumstances forced her, but she chose him. So she had agency in that aspect. Most of the plot was focused on the hero trying to figure out how to please the heroine in bed. They had sex. It was consensual, but she was like... I didn't actually like that. It was like in there and done in like five seconds. And she's like, uh, like that wasn't great for me. And so he's like, well, what do you mean? And so then he seeks the help of women who sleep around a lot. 
and he's like, how can I please my wife? Most of the plot was revolving around that. Things did start happening in the end, but there were way too many characters introduced in like such a small amount of time. And I was very confused to pursue. We got drama with his father. We got drama with his brother and they were trying to figure out, sorry, Lily's trying to nest herself right now. So we end up getting a lot more at the end, but like overall the plot was just too boring for me to get at a four star I really wanted more because the beginning starts out with her getting kidnapped and them having to get married And then like the middle 80% is just them Hanging out and I just hate books where they just sit around and do nothing So three and a half stars rounding down to three and then the Duchess gets a husband I'm very conflicted by because I actually really enjoyed the last three hours of the audiobook I really liked how her parents came someone from her past came and she finally like reveals what happened in her past with her last husband And I was actually talking to Christy from Christy reads a lot and this was based off of someone's true story Which I wish they included in the audiobook I am going to look in the physical book to see if there's like an author's note There was nothing at the end of this audiobook but again this one was one that was solely focused on the romance and there was not barely there was barely any plot so for like 70 percent of the book i was pretty bored because she like she decides she wants to have sex so she approaches him and she's like i want you to teach me like how sex can be pleasurable because it's never been that way for her because of her last husband and he's very reluctant and then he needs a fake fiance so then he uh, proposes that and so then like it's just a lot of them hanging out and like nothing really happening at all on the plot other than them like then finally hooking up and them starting to fall for each other and then i did appreciate the end though how we really saw her grow and they just like talked a lot about her being passionate about like the women's suffrage movement going to a meeting and so it was just very like mundane life things and i'm just like not into romances i have that right now and i wanted something more so for this one i'm also giving three and a half stars i just can't round it up to four because I appreciate it like I feel like I need to because I appreciate the historical context and like who it was based off of and like the heroine's personal journey but as a book itself and like how I enjoyed it I have to give it round it down to three so it does make me sad but I just loved the other two books in the series so much like book one was four star but two and three were five stars for me like I was obsessed with them in the romance and this one was just like again it's like a very sweet romance and I just am not loving sweet romances and I want like a little bit of more conflict in them so overall three and a half stars but I am going to be starting Diana Quincy's on audio next and then I have not figured out my next physical read because I have to finish I've been reading this book for so long I'm doing a fantasy vlog I'm going to finish this first and then I'm going to pop back in here It is currently Thursday night. It's like 9 30 already, but I finished my audiobook. I was doing my puzzle. I mostly listened to this while I was walking my dogs, but then I had like four and a half hours left. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to listen to the rest of this. So I sat down, started a new puzzle, which I showed you guys. And I'm giving this one, which is Diana Quincy, four stars. I think this one is probably my third favorite out of the four. Like book one and book three of the series definitely. I liked better than this one. I think book one is still, I don't know if this is a new series, but like the first book I read by her was still my absolute favorite. It's with the stepmother of his betrothed and it was so good. And this one, I would have liked a little bit more. So the heroine's like determined to turn the estate that she has inherited, this castle into this tour so that they can make money for it because it's like crumbling down and they have no money and so there's a little bit of mystery involved and it's just like there were some things that you knew were going to be conflicts because the hero was keeping things from her and she was like like the next chapter it was like 
I need to trust people. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell him this because I can't li like bear people lying to each other. And so I was like, okay, like this is obviously going to be a conflict between them. So there was stuff that was conflict because of lack of communication, but like on purpose lack of communication. But I still really enjoyed it. I loved how the heroine was very like business minded and she was really passionate about her business at home that she was basically not allowed to do because her brother took over. And so she really was like headstrong into running this business in this castle and the hero was fine. He was fine. I mean like he liked to find like artifacts and stuff and he was trying to balance like letting her take the lead while wanting to have the castle back. And he was gonna have to buy it from her. So overall, it was it was good. It was a solid historical romance. It wasn't like super super amazing, but I liked it better than the other two I've read. So solid four stars for this one. I did start to have it to hold. I am 80 pages in. I was reading Jeremy Sprints, and it's interesting so far. So she was something horrible happened to her with this husband of hers and she claims she didn't kill him, but he is dead and she went to prison and like prison during this time period horrible 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 conditions i can't even imagine especially for a woman like what you had to deal with and so she was in prison for 10 years and so she talks about like not like being able to wake up when she wants to so like the first morning she woke up at six and she was like oh my god what time is it like i'm gonna be late she's like wait but no one's going to like reprimand me or hurt me because i'm late to something anymore and she has to go to these meetings once a week to like show that she's like working okay for like the prison or whatever but the romance i don't know what to make of because the hero's already kissed her and she hasn't given like any indication that she likes him so he basically just like kissed her to take her and i know i don't know when this was written but like it's like that fantasy of being okay so this was written in 95 so I can kind of be more okay with it like 70s, 80s because it was like that fantasy of being ravished. But like she literally had a horrible, horrible husband. She was married off when she was 18. They have already like speculated what he did to her. And now he like literally just like kisses her when he's alone with her for the first time in her rooms on his estate because she is now his like head maid. So I don't know. And like he's not very likable from the beginning because he's literally with his mistress and he's like trying to like get rid of his mistress because he like doesn't want her around anymore. And I'm just like... I don't know so we'll see how this continues to go she is still trying to run his household and like they're like used to not having like a boss to turn to so some of them are like pushing back against her leadership but i'm assuming she's like gonna get more like courage and come more into herself now that she's like having a job and like not in prison anymore but we'll see the romance is making me a little wary but it's it's decent so far I don't know, nothing like five star swoony in this vlog, but that's okay. We'll continue reading. I am 122 pages in. I'm determined to finish this tonight, and it's like 350 pages. I should be able to. It's like 7.30, 7.38. And this book, I don't like it. I really, I really want to finish it for this vlog. I had two three stars and a four star. This one is so, he's already like, forced himself on her and she's just kind of like vacant like i don't want this but she's not gonna stop him she just had like the biggest panic attack ever she had a dream she was hysterically crying he came into her room she was trying in the middle of the night his response is to undress her and start touching her and being like it's okay and he's like like oh my god he was like did he hurt you always was there never any pleasure while well, he's trying to pleasure her and i'm like this is dumb and she said that um like what would you do if i told you to stop and he's like you're you can beg but you can't beg for that and he literally says relax don't make it a rape and then that's when she's like if i begged you to stop and then he's like, mm, begging's not going to be, begging to stop is not what you're going to make me do. Like, she literally was having, like, a PTSD nightmare. And he comes in and is like, let me have sex with you. This is not, like, I don't like this hero. Nothing about him is redeeming whatsoever. He's done nothing to make her feel better other than be obsessed with her. And he's like, I loved her mind and her body. And I'm like, okay, but you don't even know her. And she is just very, very, very distraught still over what her husband did to her 10 years ago. And I don't know who killed him. Like, we don't know who killed him yet. But this is more so, it's not romantic. It's very much about her overcoming her trauma. And, like, that's not my favorite in a romance book when it's not, like, with the help of the hero or, like, through the romance. 
because she's not overcoming her trauma and he is not helping whatsoever. So I don't know what everybody loves this book. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm gonna finish. I just really don't wanna DNF it, but I'm just like, it's more now out of like curiosity, like of like reading a classic versus reading this because I think I'm gonna love it. So we're gonna see. Hello. It is dark out. I just had my lamp on. I apologize. Um, I'm on page 210. And this this is getting better because the heroine's actually showing her personality more, opening up more, and developing a connection with the hero. So I am liking it more. She really opened up about her time in prison and her time with her husband. And before she like literally didn't say anything. She just like laid there, especially when like he wanted to have sex with her. And I'm like, this is just like not what I like to read. But she's definitely growing a lot and overcoming what had happened in her past. So I'm, I'm liking it more. I did almost DNF this because there was a part where he had friends over and she almost got assaulted by the friend. And I was like, I don't want to read this. Like, I don't like to read about women constantly being assaulted on page. Like, that is not fun for me. I don't want to read that. But it is interesting that the hero is now determined to help her, like, enjoy sex. It's reminding me of Defy Not the Heart. But at least in that one, like, she was, like, wholly willing from the beginning. In this one, she's just kind of, like was so passive like I guess this is happening to me I guess he just is gonna do this okay multiple times so far we have not yet had that scene where she's enjoyed it but I'm wondering if it's coming where she is going to learn that sex can be like pleasurable for people because she's only known her husband and then this guy that she's like not been able to enjoy anything because she just has PTSD from when she was married so this will be interesting to finish like I said, it's more just like a morbid curiosity at this point. I don't think I'm going to enjoy the rest of this, but I do want to see uh, from a historical standpoint, like why this was so popular and why so many people love this so much. Maybe it'll turn around, but we'll see. Hi, I am here to chat about to happen to hold. I am very conflicted. So I, it's interesting because like I was looking at the step back and I feel like that is their facial expressions are so appropriate for this book like she does not look happy he does not look happy and like I don't know what to feel so I usually when this happens I go to Goodreads and look at reviews he's not likable and all the reviews say he is not likable he's a horrible person he literally rapes her in the beginning he's not nice and he's very selfish he falls so in love with her he says I love you before she says I love you. He is the one pining and going after her and she is the one like, I don't know if I can be with you. So the tables turn very quickly in here, but the most of this book is addressing the injustices of the justice system. Like she went to prison for 10 years, horrible conditions. She had no representation. She had no chance in court and she didn't do it. And if she did not have Sebastian when she got out, she, her life would be over. There are so many things that happen where he only got his way because he is I think an earl or something. I don't remember. Whenever his father passes away, he's going to inherit some titles. So he is very wealthy and he gets to do whatever he wants. So like when things are happening to her, he can step and be like, no, this is going to go my way. And it does because he's rich. If she didn't have him, she would literally just be back to square one. She grows so much as a character. She becomes so much more confident. She has so much more personality. She is willing to like go after what she wants in life and she has not had control of her life so should we get her backstory 18 years old she's married off to this guy who's horrible it was so interesting the things that were revealed at the end though and like what happened and why but i don't know like as a romance it wasn't satisfying but it's death i can see why people love this book i was reading reviews and i was like okay definitely like i see that people pointing out like yeah the hero's horrible you're gonna hate him for the first half i don't i don't know i don't know like it's it's the hero's horrible in the beginning like I said I want to DNF it so many things were happening to heroin she literally just like passively was going through life letting things happen to her but like that was the point so like what do you rate a book where you feel exactly how the author intends you to feel and you didn't super love it so like there's a lot of three okay someone said this is a really difficult book for me to rate 
because it's a phenomenal phenomenal character study which it for sure is right there's nothing level above that guy right she is completely damaged in the beginning she's very emotionally scarred i'm um, okay so people did say sebastian didn't grow, like suffer enough because he didn't he was a horrible person in the beginning and got his hea at the end so like why did he but like that's the point but i mean i would have liked to see a little bit more growth like why did he get everything he wanted just because he's a rich man like that's definitely annoying but like that was the point to show like that's how society was so i don't know like i was going to rate this two stars halfway through i was like this is not but now i'm like i don't know the first half was not good like it makes sense and so i don't know i don't know what i want to rate this like do i rate it four stars because like i take off a star because of how hard the beginning was but i'm like that was so interesting like it's i didn't love the romance obviously like but it's a romance so shouldn't i love the romance but i'm like that was so interesting he was he was in love like he was so in love with her he's like all he wanted to do was save her and she wouldn't let him which was very interesting like the rachel the heroine was so interesting and in how she definitely like let him do whatever he wanted in the beginning to her and she had no agency and no backbone and by the end she was like no I mean, obviously they add together in the end, like they get married, but it's definitely a really gray hero. I don't know, maybe I'll give it four stars. I am, I'm just surprised because I hated it so much. I was like, this hero's the worst. What the heck? But it's such an interesting book, especially what happens and like the commentary on society at the time. So I think because it's just making me think so much, I kind of, I do want to give it four stars. Which is such a jump from the two star. Literally, I told you I was going to DNF at the beginning. I was like, this is such a bad book because so many bad things are happening to this heroine at the hands of the hero and his friends. Like, what the heck? But I guess, like, he got one bad thing happen to him, but not really. But, like, he should have had a little bit more repercussions for his actions. But this is so interesting. If you have read this, please let me know your thoughts. Like, I need to know because this is so interesting and one of the hardest books to rate in like my recent reading journey so let me know what you thought but that is my historical romance reading vlog i hope you enjoyed i had two three stars two four stars and the they weren't bad they were not bad i do want to read the new lorraine heath because i know tori loved it she said it was so angsty and second chance so i definitely want to read it but i will link everybody's videos down below make sure you go watch everybody to see how they thought of, of the historical romances they read i'm sad i didn't have any like five stars blow me away but i really enjoyed this experience like this one is putting me in the mood for like reading those super interesting old school ones that really make you think it just reminds me a lot of like flowers through the storm or is it Lord of Scoundrels? All the beloved old schools that just have so much to the plot to them. And they're just so interesting. So, yeah. That's my vlog. I hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.